Morning guys, uh, thanks for hanging out last night. Those of you that did in the post-game therapy session, now on about uh, four hours of sleep starting the workday, and I think the adrenaline of the win is kind of worn off and given way to, uh, it's not a victory Tuesday kind of video. So if that's not your speed, not the video for you, no harm, no foul, it's fine, but I just, uh, I I think going into the game, if I told you we're going to win, but Aaron Rodgers is going to blow out his Achilles on the third play, nobody would have signed up for that. So I can't, I can't get there with you guys who are way more optimistic than me. I, w I wish I was. I truly, I truly wish I was. But um, here's where I'm at. I'm looking at this Jets team and what's the goal now for the rest of the season. And at, at the time of this recording, I haven't got, we haven't gotten official, official word on um, Rogers injury, but assuming it's a, it's a significant long-term injury, right? Um, now the goal of winning a Super Bowl is obviously no longer a thing. And, but I do think fighting like hell to end the longest playoff drought in the sport is absolutely still the goal and still on the table. After all, we are in first place at the time of this recording with the tiebreaker over the Buffalo Bills. Um, and I'm looking at this quarterback room and is, it's the same conversation as last year. Look, Zach Wilson aside, if we're, if you, I'm not trying to pick a fight with anyone on Zach Wilson. If you really believe in him and he's going to take the reins and uh, you know, go win 10, 11 games with this team. Okay, that's possible. We just we just agree to disagree on the player at this point. Um, I thought that Zach Wilson did his job last night as the backup. Going into the game, his job as the backup was to come in, and if you can spot the starter for a game or two and give your team a chance to win, he did that. And all offseason, I said I'm fine with Zach Wilson in that role. I'm fine with Zach Wilson spotting Aaron Rodgers for a game or two if he stubs his toe. And I still stand by that. And Zach Wilson had a game... Zach Wilson, let's, I'll say this. If the Bills backup quarterback was in there, he, the Bills don't win, right? Bills don't win. Um, but now he's not a backup anymore because now it's 16 games. Now he's a starter. And now Tim Boyle's the backup. So nobody on earth would have agreed that a quarterback room of Zach Wilson and Tim Boyle is the answer to anything. If that's the answer, we're asking the wrong questions. And Zach has missed time. Zach has missed several weeks each of his first two seasons. So you're telling me the rest of the way we're going to go, what, 12 games of Zach, four games of Tim Boyle? Uh, Tim Boyle had a couple of these preseason games, but look at his career start. So I say all that to say the Jets should be, it would be negligent not to make some calls in the quarterback market. Now, there's no perfect solutions, and if uh, and Zach's going to get Dallas. He's going to get Dallas at least because you're not going to sign a quarterback on Wednesday uh, off the street or trade for one and then have that quarterback start over Zach who's been in the, the offense the entire offseason. Um, but I'm looking at some names, and I'm not interested in the corpse of Matt Ryan or Nick Foles. Please, no. You need a guy who can at least have functional mobility. A dry cleaned Matt Ryan would have been sacked six times behind that offensive line last night. So no, 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 none of that. Uh, the number one option uh, that I like is Jacoby Brissett. If um, the Washington Commanders are willing to part with him, uh, he's a he's a big dude. He can wiggle a little bit. He's been a low end starter, a high end backup in this league. He's thirty years old. He's got a ton of experience. He's been beloved by teammates everywhere he's went. He's done a little bit of winning. Uh, you know, last year in Cleveland is over 60% completions, two to one touchdown interception ratio, seven yards per attempt. Those are, you know, those are numbers better than anything we've had in six years. Um, and then if Zach Wilson uh, takes it and goes and he keeps cooking and Jacoby is your backup and it costs you whatever a day three pick, I, I would still do that, man. I'd still do that to try and keep this season on life support. Because if the other scenario happens, then Jacoby's in there and you, you have a shot. You have a shot to be the seven seed. Um, so he's my number one option. My number two preference would be Gardner Minshew. Again, a guy you have to trade for. I don't know if these teams want to trade their backup quarterbacks. It's kind of like a backup offensive lineman. Teams don't want to trade a good backup quarterback. But uh, Minshew is a dude whose stats are clearly better than 
who he is because he's never get, gets a chance to start, it seems, but over 60% completions, 44 touchdowns to 15 picks for his career, over seven yards per attempt. That <laughs> Those are pretty awesome stats, but I'm guessing they don't tell the whole story because he's, he keeps getting jobs as a backup. But yeah, Gardner Minshew and Jacoby Brissett are both better than anything we've seen um, in six years. And at the very least, they're, be they're better backups than Tim Boyle. Um, so he's number two. And then Jameis Winston, same situation, backup who uh, he's just way more turnover prone. So I probably like the first two guys better. But Jameis Winston is you can have a 21st century passing offense with Jameis Winston, right? Um, not a lot of perfect solutions. Then Car there's Carson Wentz, who's a free agent. And that's why the only reason I'll mention him is because he's a free agent and you could just sign him. But it seems like there's just a weird vibe about what he is in the locker room and all that kind of stuff. But um, he is one year removed from 27 touchdowns, seven picks, 60% completions on a team with a winning record. It'd be negligent not to call and see, see what's going on there. Again, if these guys suck, then what we've then Tim Boyle and Zach Wilson, I don't know what the word is for them if these guys I'm talking about suck. So I think Zach Wilson, I think Robert Sala did give a vote of confidence for Zach. I kept saying, seeing people say that he said it's Zach the rest of the way, but I haven't seen that tweeted or clipped. Um, and the confidence is fine, you know, start Zach against Dallas, have the confidence of Zach, do all that, but to just say right now it's Zach Wilson and Tim Boyle the next. 16 games to try to make the playoffs. I think that's freaking crazy. So I'm sorry if that's like too negative, but I'm just trying to be solution oriented. You know, when Becton goes down, we get Dwayne Brown. Uh, last year, Brees went down. We signed James Robinson. Now, if Rodgers goes on IR, you literally have a roster spot open. And to not consider giving that roster spot to another quarterback out there who could be had would be negligent. Um, in my opinion, but uh, yeah, it's a roster full of dudes, man. It's a loaded team. It's a loaded team. We're not going to win a Super Bowl without Rodgers, but I think hedging our bets with one of these mid, <laughs> you know, low, low end starters to high end backups could increase our uh, hedging our bets and trying to get a wild card, man. Because uh, at this point, I'll, I'll take it. You know, it's all we got to hope for. But, uh, Jeff fans, <laughs> man, we're nothing if not loyal. Good Lord. Have a great day.